Hello, everybody. I am Mr. Drain. I am the sixth grade teacher this year. Some of you may recognize me. Uh, I used to teach third grade. This is my fourth year teaching here at Pearl. Um, fun fact, I used to coach PE here a while back. Um, but I've coached in the Care Youth League program for 10 years, and all 10 years uh, I have been coaching sixth graders. So uh, I love this age. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be lots of fun. All right, here is my contact info. Sorry, I'm going to be moving this circle around um, throughout just so that you can see everything on the slide. The safest place is probably over here, actually. So let me put it over here. So this is my contact information. Uh, this is my email, uh, my phone number. Also, you have um, my contact information on the Remind Message app. Anything urgent, anything you want me to see right away, uh, I would send on Remind or send a text or call me. Um, if it's not that important, you can always send me an email. I check my email probably twice a day, and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so please, if it's urgent, send me remind or uh, go ahead and text me. That's perfectly okay. All right, let's get started here. So our reading incentive program, we are continuing with the reading incentive. So uh, our goal is to get them to read one hour per week for homework. So that's 15 minutes a night, Monday through Thursday. That'll get them their hour. Um, you need to sign their reading minutes in their planner so that everyone has a daily planner. Inside the planner, uh, at the beginning, the first couple pages, you'll see month calendars. So find the day they read, write 15 minutes, initial your name. I will check that every Friday. I'll check that on Friday and I will update their reading hours for them. The one hour per week will be part of their homework. And we will talk about that later when we uh, get more into homework. Um, the goal is to read 50 hours by the end of the year. Um, we have set up 10 hour benchmarks uh, throughout the year. The first one is set on October 15th. So the goal is to get to 10 hours by October 15th. Then there'll be another 10 hour benchmark. So the 20 hour mark. So if you meet all those hour marks, the 10 hour marks, you'll get to 50 by the end of the year. Um, every 10 hours, they'll get a prize, some sort of reward um, if they reach their 10 hours by the time that they're supposed to. You can read those 50 hours as fast as you want. There's no uh, time limit. The goal is to get to 50 end of the year. That's where we want you. If you get there, before then, that's awesome. Um, every hour after 50 hours, you will get a raffle ticket. Uh, Mrs. Moore will be doing raffles um, each week once we have enough people that have reached 50 hours, and they will get a ticket to throw into the raffle uh, every hour after 50. Um, we are doing something that's a little new this year for sixth graders, but it's something that they will carry with them as they move into middle school and high school at Real Hondo Prep, um, the AR Accelerated Reader Program. So after they finish a book for their silent reading, a book that they've checked out in the library or that they read on their own time, they can take a test, a quiz, on the Accelerated Reader Program. Um, when they finish a book, take a quiz and pass the quiz, I have a game board in the back of our classroom and they will move across the game board and they will receive, um, you know, prizes or drain bucks. We'll get to that later. Um, different things throughout the year rewards for them, not only finishing the book, but passing the test. So let's move to the next slide here. Okay. Math. So Mrs. Moore is going to be talking about math. Um, we will have a split class, but I will let Mrs. Moore come in and get started uh, and discuss the math portion of this presentation. Hi, it's Mrs. Moore here to talk to you about my favorite subject, math. 
Um, when I first started teaching, I originally started as a math teacher. I actually taught advanced algebra and uh, realized that it was kind of too late to fix students' math problems at that level. So ended up teaching elementary school where I felt like we could start fixing things before there were actually serious problems in holes in math. So um, it's really important to me as principal and as teacher to make sure that our students have a really strong foundation in math. So in speaking with Dr. Johnson, we came up with this idea to um, traditionally in the past, Rio Hondo Prep has split into two math classes starting in sixth grade, but um, some of those can still kind of have holes in things as they go through math. So our idea is to create a fluid advanced math class. And by doing this, students will test out chapter by chapter instead of taking one test that covers the whole year's worth of material. So some students may only test out for one or two chapters. Uh, some may never test out and that's okay because what we're trying to do is make sure that they have a really strong math foundation, but we also don't want them to sit through math class and be bored. So um, those students, each chapter, they'll get a chance to take the chapter test. If they score an A without having to do any of the material in the chapter, then they're going to um, spend the next few weeks in my advanced math class. And um, if not, they're gonna spend the time working on that chapter, which is the math material that they need to work on. At the end of the year, uh, there will be a diagnostic test um, following up to kind of let us know where students stand. Um, we did already take a pre-diagnostic test at the beginning of the year to kind of target those students who look like they're headed for the advanced track and um, we're using Khan Academy this year for our math support online system. So um, students who are headed towards course three for next year, uh, which is kind of the equivalent of eighth grade or pre-algebra math, will be in the course two library on Khan Academy. And those who um, are kind of uh, still working at the course one level, which is the level exactly where they're supposed to be in sixth grade, uh, will continue to work on that in Khan Academy. And we wanna make sure that all of our students have a strong foundation. Okay, language arts. So language arts uh, is also going to encompass not only our uh, literature, but also writing and grammar. So I will be covering the literature portion of language arts, which will be novel studies. Um, we are currently reading Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. It's a good starter. It also goes along uh, in our history. We'll be talking about Greek mythology and things like that. So it goes great with uh, ties in great to our history. But uh, we're going to be focusing a lot on novels and uh, comprehension and critical thinking. Okay, making sure they understand what they're reading and can not only understand it, but convey their thoughts and things to their classmates or out loud um, to me. So that is going to be our focus for literature. Uh, Ms. Horton is going to talk more about writing and grammar. Um, the grades are going to be separate. So Ms. Horton's going to give them a writing and grammar grade, and I'm going to give them a literature grade. So the there will be two separate grades when you look at them on GradeLink. So with that, uh, I'm going to bring in Miss Miss Horton now, and she's going to discuss writing and grammar. Hi, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Miss Horton. I've taught sixth grade the past couple of years over at Rio Hondo Prep. I've also helped out a lot in the Care Youth League program, especially the girls program. I'm just coming to practices, so you may have seen me around, but I am very excited to be coming over three times a week to help the sixth graders with their writing and with their grammar. So I just want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing this year. So we're going to be working a lot on their writing, specifically their essay writing. And sixth graders often struggle with organizing their thoughts. Um, they have a lot to say, but normally not maybe in the right order. So 
I'm going to be teaching them a system that's been developed by a woman named Jane Schaefer, and it helps them write their essays by giving them an organization to follow, uh, where they put their evidence, where they put their analysis, how they start their paragraphs, and it pretty much just gives them an outline for them to follow. And we use this program over at Rio Hondo Prep from 7th all the way up to 12th. And many students use this system as they go off into college, and it really helps them with their writing, even in their college classes. And so during this time, we're going to be working on where to put evidence in their essays, um, how to do their analysis, and um, it's going to be really great. We are also going to be doing some creative writing, which the students really enjoy and is also very important. And we will be doing some grammar. So if you see the picture there of that little grammar workbook, um, we use that in class and we just do exercises. Uh, we start off with parts of speech, going over nouns and verbs, and then later we move on in the year to cover different types of sentences structure. So um, again, I'm looking forward to this year. I'm so excited to be working with sixth graders. They're a great age and hopefully I will see you all soon. Okay, history. History is something that I am uh, really excited about teaching. I think it's going to be a lot of fun this year. So uh, we are going to be studying world history and geography uh, and ancient civilizations. So there'll be lots of uh, cool things that we do with history. Um, some of them are themed weeks. So we're going to have a Greek week. Um, where we, we'll do lots of things. We'll, we're going to... Uh, write and perform Greek tragedy plays where we'll dress up in costumes and we'll perform uh, Greek tragedies, which will be lots, lots of fun. We'll do lots of activities uh, that are Olympic themed because the Olympics did originate in Greece. Um, we'll have an Egyptian week where we make obelisks and the obelisks are going to tell stories. Um, we'll use the Egyptian symbols to write stories and it'll be really cool. Um, this is where your big at-home open house project is going to come from. So uh, you're going to, I'm going to put a list of different famous ancient world landmarks on Gradelink. You're going to choose one of those, and you're going to make a replica or a model of that for open house. So, you know, Colosseum, Great Wall, Pyramids, Stonehenge, lots of different things to choose from. Um, there's a lot of good old uh buildings in ancient Greece. Um, so it'll be really fun. And that is going to be a big open house at home project. Um, also, I'm a big fan of oral presentations, um, getting the kids, the students up in front of people and speaking. I think it's a really important thing to have. Um, so we'll do some oral presentations uh, for history. There won't be anything big but just practicing getting up in front of the class and speaking, um, public speaking, things like that, because I think that's a really important skill to have. So it'll be awesome, and they'll need it as they you know, go into middle school and high school. All right, science. So we are uh, using Carolina Science. It's a program we've used for a couple years here at Pearl. Um, we, had, we added a couple more. Um, to use for sixth grade. So uh, right now, during the first trimester, we're studying um, uh, Earth's dynamic systems, you know, tectonic plates, volcanoes, lots of different Earth's layers, and how these different geologic processes, uh, you know, change the Earth, you know, how mountains are formed, valleys, different things like that. Um, the second semester, we're going to go into space exploration and astronomy, which I think will be really cool, really fun, and something that they can practice at home. You know, when they go outside at night, look up in the stars, see what they can find. It'll be really cool. And then third trimester, we'll dive into aquatic ecosystems, which uh, will tie into our uh, Catalina Island science camp really, really well. So uh, lots of fun to be had in science, lots of different things to learn. It's going to be uh, really great, really awesome. Spanish. So uh, we've added Spanish. Uh, it's going to be a longer class period. We're going to try to uh, form this class to be more like a middle school structured period. 
So it will be a longer period. Uh, like it says, they're structured more like middle school. They're going to have a regular workbook that they work out of. And here's a picture of it here. And then another thing, it's going to be graded regular grading system. So it won't be pass or fail, you know, E, S, uh, N. It'll be regular, A, B, C. So they'll earn a, an actual grade. Um, they will do different types of tests. There will be some uh, oral tests where they speak out loud in uh, the language. So, again, lots of fun to be had here. And it'll be awesome because when they go to middle school, when they go to high school, they'll be better prepared for their uh, foreign language classes in the future. All right, Chromebooks. So, um, cool thing about Chromebooks this year, each student will have their own device. Sixth grade is getting their own personal cart of Chromebooks. We will not have to share with anyone. So they will all have their own Chromebook device to use in class. Um, the Chromebooks are going to be built into the curriculum. So we aren't going to um, have a normal computer class. We're going to use the computers throughout all the different classes. For writing, you type essays, for literature, um, for science, history, math on Khan Academy. So they're going to be built in. They're going to get used a lot. Um, we're also going to teach them how to access GradeLink. So the students will be able to access their student grade link, check their grades, uh, check announcements, anything else that I may post on there. And as well as they will have access to Google Classroom. We will be using Google Classroom a lot this year because it is something that will be used a lot in middle school and when they get to high school, in high school as well. So it's just a good tool, a good thing to be able to use. And the Chromebooks... With the Chromebooks, we'll be teaching a lot more and be giving them a lot more responsibility um, throughout class. Okay, homework. So um, they're going to receive approximately one hour of homework each night. It's not an exact science, so uh, some may finish early. Some, it may take them a little longer. It should not exceed an hour and a half. Um, the homework assignments will include two to three different assignments. So they could have math and reading, uh, writing and math, science and reading. It could be anything, uh, but it should be two to three assignments per night. If it's three, there'll be shorter assignments, two, a little bit longer. Um, so it won't just be one subject of homework per night. They'll have multiple subjects. Um, they should have their homework assignments written down in their journal or in their planner, so that if you were to ask them, hey, what did you do for homework tonight? It is there written down in their planner. If for some reason they are unable to finish their homework, have the student contact me. Um, uh, we want to encourage the students to be responsible and contact their teachers if they're having issues. Um, the grade will be lowered if they cannot figure out how to turn in the assignment. So there are circumstances where it won't, where they have an issue and they can't turn it in. I'll give them time to turn it in. But if it never gets turned in, then their grade will be lowered. If they just forget it at home, um, again, we want to teach responsibility. So um, that will cause a grade to be lowered on that assignment. There will be no weekend homework. Um, except for one hour of reading. So they read one hour during the week, Monday through Thursday, and then one hour on the weekend. So per seven days, that is two hours of reading, and it all needs to be signed and initialed in their planner. If your child is absent, um, they can always get the assignment, the homework assignment through Google Classroom, through email, or I can have it ready to pick up in the school office. Just notify me uh, which route you want and I will make it happen. Okay, the communication envelopes. So um, you're gonna get home envelopes, sent home envelopes every Tuesday. Um, you can keep everything I send except for progress reports, math history tests, and notes home. And I want all those things initialed or signed. The math test, 
math and history tests won't have an area for you to sign. So just initial in one of the corners of the page and then send that on home. So those are items that I want returned in the envelopes. Okay, our discipline and reward system is going to be drain bucks. So I have printed money. Um, they can earn money for lots of different things, uh, participating in class, helping out the teacher, helping out a, another student. Um, there's ways to lose drain bucks, you know, not participating, um, talking when they're not supposed to, off, off task, any sort of ways to lose and earn drain bucks. They can use their drain bucks, their money, to buy things. We have access to a microwave and a refrigerator. So, you know, I'll have some popcorn maybe that they can purchase for snack. I have some water bottles, some Gatorade maybe, drinks that they can buy um, to drink for a snack, um, maybe some juice, things like that. Uh, and then I'll just have other random items that they can buy from the shop with using their drain bucks. Um, if they run out of drain bucks for disciplinary reasons, they will have a weekend homework assignment. Now, if we have an auction or we open the shop on a Friday afternoon and they're just really feeling it that day, so they buy, um, they spend all their money on items, they won't get homework for that. Um, I'm talking if they lose their money throughout the week for reasons other than spending it, um, they will have a weekend homework assignment. So we don't want to be at zero in the bank. Okay, field trips. So right now we do have a field trip planned on September 28th. Um, for the time being, because of COVID, parent chaperones cannot ride the bus. You can still chaperone, you will just have to drive yourself to the location of the field trip. Um, right now, we're only uh, planning exclusively outdoor field trips just to stay in line with the protocols. Um, so we have one planned. We're looking for another one in October. We're going to try to keep it to one field trip a month because it just it encourages, you know, learning outside of the classroom, which is what we want. Um, so we are going to Riley's Farm at the end of September and hopefully... Uh, we'll have another field trip planned for October. And again, right now, all these field trips will be exclusively outdoors. Okay, so our classroom furniture. Now, uh, this is a Zoom or a video presentation. But this, these are what our classroom furniture are going to look like. So these are what our chairs will look like. Um, the chairs actually just arrived today, so that's awesome. Um, the th cool thing about these chairs is you can sit in them three different ways. You can sit forward. You can sit uh, in reverse with your legs going through the little gaps here. You can sit in them sideways. You know, for those uh, students who like to move around a lot, um, this chair provides maximum comfort um, no matter how they want to sit. Our desk are triangular shaped. You can put them together for groups or you can keep them separate. So they're they're very easy to move around, um, which is kind of cool. It's their own space. Um, notice there is no storage in these desks. So we have lockers that are on the way. Okay, lockers are on the way. They're going to store all their stuff in their lockers that they don't need for the class that they are in. So we're going to Teach organization, get them ready, okay? This is what you need for this period. Make sure you have it out of your locker. You don't need this, make sure it's in your locker. Um, other things that will go in the locker, if they have a cell phone, it's going to go inside their locker with the power off. Um, I will be able to monitor this um, through cameras. There will be cameras, uh, surveillance cameras that, shine, uh, that show the locker area and I will have access to view them from my, my phone. So I will know what's going on in the locker areas. They won't be able to hide there during class. They won't be able to use their phones um, when they're over there. I will be able to see what's going on. And also at night, if someone tries to 
burglarize our lockers, I will also see them as well. So it's going to be a good system. It's going to be awesome. Again, just that getting them ready for middle school, right? They're going to have lockers in middle school and high school. So just that organization it takes to know what you need and when you need it and always have it ready. All right, questions. So if you have any questions for me, um, feel free to send me a remind message. You can ask anything you want. Um, I am, though, going to ask one thing of you. So to make sure uh, you watch this video, I would like for you to send me a message with the words, win the mental game. Why win the mental game? Um, that is our class phrase or theme this year. All right, there are, uh, I'm an avid golf fan, and uh, the mental aspect of golf is very important. You know, you have to conquer your doubts and your fears in your head first so that you can conquer them out in the world. So, again, just like school, right? We have doubts about math, about different subjects. And we have these fears in our minds, and sometimes our mind can convince us that we can't do something. So our theme this year, hey, we're going to conquer that. We're going to win the mental game. We're going to win the mental game so that we can be the best student that we can be. And the great part about the mental game is it's a game about conquering yourself. You're not comparing yourself to anyone else. It's you versus you. Be the best you can be and win the mental game. So if you can, at the conclusion of this video, go ahead so that I know you watched it. Um, send me a remind message with the words, win the mental game. And again, thank you. Uh, I look forward to meeting you all in person. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. And have a good rest of your week.